In example 2, a firm produces two goods, X and Y, and has this total revenue function. The first two terms of the revenue function relate to the revenue from X. That would be the price of X times the quantity of X. The second two terms relate to the revenue from Y. That would be the price of Y times the quantity of Y. There's also this budget constraint. For example, the number of hours of labour available may be limited to 80 hours. In such an example, it would take 5 hours to produce 1 unit of X and 10 hours to produce 1 unit of Y. The firm will want to maximise total revenue. What we're going to do is find the first order conditions for a maximum. We can't demonstrate that's a maximum at this stage because we don't have the second order conditions. We'll also solve for lambda and interpret the Lagrange multiplier. The first step is to state the problem in mathematical terms. That would be max total revenue equal to 36x minus 3x squared plus 56y minus 4y squared. Subject to the constraint 5x plus 10y is equal to 80. The second step is to form the Lagrangian. L is equal to the objective function 36x minus 3x squared plus 56y minus 4y squared minus lambda times the constraint. Recall that's g of xy minus c, 5x plus 10y minus 80. We have the Lagrangian. Step 3 is to find the first order conditions. Differentiating the Lagrangian with respect to x will be L1 prime. We'll have 36 minus 6x. The y terms are treated as constants here, so that will be minus 5 lambda. That comes from differentiating this term. These two terms are constant with respect to x, so the first derivative is equal to 0. We set that equal to 0 until we find the partial with respect to y. L2 prime is equal to 56 minus 8y minus 10 lambda equals 0. For the third equation, we state the constraint 5x plus 10y is equal to 80, and we can number those 1, 2, and 3. The fourth step is to solve for x, y, and lambda. From equation 1, we solve for lambda in terms of x. Lambda is equal to 36 minus 6x on 5. From 2, again we solve for lambda. Lambda is equal to 56 minus 8y on 10. Since the right-hand side of both of these equations equals lambda, they're equal to each other, that implies that 36 minus 6x on 5 is equal to 56 minus 8y on 10. We can simplify that. 4y is equal to 6x minus 8. And one step further, y is equal to 1.5x minus 2. We'll call that equation 4. So we can substitute for y in equation 3. Equation 3 was 5x plus 10y equals 80. Subbing in for y, that implies that 5x plus 10 times 1.5x minus 2 is equal to 80. We can simplify that. I have 20x equals 100 and divide through by 20, x equals 5. We'll call that x naught since it's an optimal value. y naught then is equal to 1.5x minus 2. So that's 1.5 times 5 minus 2. It's equal to 5.5. We can substitute into either of those equations for lambda. Well, 36 minus 6x on 5 is equal to 36 minus 6 times 5 on 5, and that's equal to 1.2. We have x0 is equal to 5, y0 is equal to 5.5, and lambda equals 1.2. Next, we interpret lambda. Remember the constraint was 5x plus 10y equals 80. 
The way we interpret lambda is we think about increasing the right hand side of the constraint by one unit to 81. In that case the optimal value of the objective function will increase by 1.2 units, the value of lambda. So there we have a standard interpretation of lambda in words. To finish off, let's look at how total revenue changes. First we find the optimal value of total revenue. We do that by substituting in the optimal values of x and y, and that gives us 292. So if the firm can find an extra unit of the constraint, it can increase its total revenue from 292 to 293.2. In example 2 we had a firm producing products X and Y that wanted to maximise its total revenue function. This was subject to a budget constraint. We found the stationary point X0, Y0. What we want to do now is to show that that stationary point well first was a local maximum and then we'll show it's a global maximum. As we've seen the second order conditions for a Lagrangian are based on this function D of X, Y and Lambda. The test for a local maximum is this. We evaluate d at the stationary point x0, y0, and if the value is less than zero, then x0, y0 is a local maximum. In order to evaluate d, we need to find the second order partials. Let's begin by writing down the first order partials. We need to find L11, L22, and the cross partials L12. First we find L11 prime prime. It will differentiate the first partial with respect to x once more with respect to x. The first term is 36. Differentiating with respect to x gives us 0. The second term gives us minus 6. The third term, again, has no x, so the derivative is 0. For L22 prime prime, we differentiate this function again with respect to y. Again, only the second term is non-zero. It'll be minus 8. For L12 prime prime, well that's equal to L21 prime prime, we can differentiate the first partial with respect to x, again with respect to y, or we can differentiate the first partial with respect to y, once again with respect to x. In either case we get the same result, that is 0. Next we want to differentiate the constraint with respect to x to get g1 prime, and with respect to y to get g2 prime. We have the constraint there, g1 prime of x, y, differentiating with respect to x, will equal 5, and g2 primes will equal 10. So let's plug those values into our d function. That will be equal to L11, well that was minus 6, times g2 prime squared, 10 squared, minus 2 times L12, well, 0, times 5 by 10, plus L22 times G1 prime squared, well that will be minus 8 times 5 squared. If we carry out that calculation, we'll find that's equal to minus 950. So evaluated x0, y0, d is less than 0, Therefore we can conclude that x0, y0 equal to 5, 5.5 5 .5 is a local maximum. It's a local maximum because we evaluate a d at x0, y0. So note the process here. First we state the conditions of the test. Namely, if d is less than 0, then x0, y0 is a local maximum. We evaluate d at x0, y0, and if the condition is met, then we conclude that that point is a local maximum. We've shown that x0, y0 is a local maximum. Now we want to show that it's a global maximum as well. How do we do that? If we can show the Lagrangian is a concave function, then that means x0, y0 is a global maximum. Remember the test for concavity? We came across this first in lecture 7. In order to test for concavity, we need to show that these conditions hold over the whole domain of the function, in this case the Lagrangian. We need to show that the direct second order partials, L11 and L22, are both less than or equal to zero over the whole domain, 
and then we need to show that this function is greater than or equal to zero over the whole domain. If that's the case, the Lagrangian is concave and x0, y0 is a global maximum. Let's have a look at those values then. As we saw, L11 prime prime was equal to minus 6. L22 prime prime is equal to minus 8. L12 prime prime is equal to 0. So if there are no x's or y's in any of these functions, then they hold over the whole domain. So these two second order partials are negative over the whole domain. Let's look at the third condition. That's equal to minus 6 times minus 8 minus 0. So plus 48. Again, there's no x or y in there, so that condition holds over the whole domain. So the conditions for concavity are met, and we conclude x0, y0 equal to 5, 5.5 is a global maximum.